All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be our next video on photosynthesis and specifically looking at light dependent reactions. Let's get started on this next video. So in order to understand what we're covering right now, we're looking at the light dependent reactions. So we're looking on this side of the diagram here. Now the light dependent reactions, we are taking light energy and we are converting it into chemical energy, NADPH and ATP, that we are then going through and feeding into the Calvin cycle. So the whole point here is to input H2O, oxygen will be an output as a result of this, but we're trying to make NADPH and ATP to power the Calvin cycle in the thylakoids. So what we're going to look at here is the electron transport chain for the light dependent reactions. There's a couple of things that we need to know when going through and understanding this. We're going to have a hydrogen ion gradient and we're going to have a couple key proteins that we need to look at. We have photosystem two, we have photosystem one here. We have each of the carrier proteins associated with this and we have ATP synthase. And our goal here is, is to get ATP synthase to produce ATP. So let's run through this and see how it works as we get light energy that's going to first go through and excite our chlorophyll pigment. Inside photosystem two and photosystem one, we have chlorophyll pigment. And what that chlorophyll pigment's going to do is it's going to capture light energy and it's going to excite our electrons. Those excited electrons, remember when they are excited, are going to release energy. And as they move down the electron transport chain, and as our carrier proteins function here, what we're going to see is we're, again, trying to create that hydrogen ion gradient and a gradient that's going to enable ATP synthase to function. So as those electrons move down the electron transport chain, they're going to provide energy to pump these hydrogen ions against the concentration gradient or create a concentration gradient. They're going to then move into photosystem one where they're going to be again excited so we're recharging those electrons once they're recharged they're again going to move down the electron transport chain and provide those hydrogen ion energy to go through and be moved across into the stromal space here now once we have a sufficient enough gradient our atp synthase is going to have the necessary power to go through and function and as it goes through and spins it's going to create our atp just like it did in the electron transport chain in cellular respiration. However, we're going to go through and use these electrons to turn NADP plus, and a hydrogen ion here is also going to be added, and we're going to turn this into NADPH. This is another molecule that is going to go through and provide energy that's going to enable us to send it to the Calvin cycle. Now you might be asking me, where did these electrons come from if they're going through and being added to NADPH? Well, they come via the splitting of water. We're going to split a water molecule, take the electrons off of it. We're going to take a hydrogen ion off, which is going to provide, again, that hydrogen ion gradient. And the byproduct that I'm going to get from that is molecular oxygen. So what we can see here is now we have oxygen as a byproduct. Our electrons have been added into photosystem two, and we can take now our NADPH and our ATP over to the Calvin cycle to power that cycle to make our sugar. All right, so let's go through and reset the graphic here so that way we can understand what's going on. Remember, we're going to have light, which is going to excite that chlorophyll. When the chlorophyll goes through and captures that light energy, that is going to be transferred to excite our electrons here. Once those electrons are excited to a higher energy state, they're going to move down the electron transport chain and provide it with the necessary energy to go through and move the hydrogen ions over to the stroma. Once we start establishing a hydrogen ion gradient through the stroma, it's going to enable our ATP synthase to work. The electrons are going to move from photosystem two to photosystem one. Again, the chlorophyll is going to absorb that light energy, excite those electrons once more. And once those electrons are excited, they're again going to provide energy to pump the hydrogen ions into the stroma, further increasing that gradient and once that gradient has been established, it's going to provide the necessary energy to power our ATP synthase, which is going to take ADP and turn it into ATP. The electrons at the end of this are going to be added to NADP plus with a hydrogen ion to create NADPH. And water is then split at photosystem two 
to provide the electrons necessary for the electron transport chain to continue. What we see here is oxygen is a byproduct, and we continue to establish a hydrogen ion gradient. And lastly, NADPH and ATP go to power the Calvin cycle. All right, did you learn? Well, did you learn a couple of things? Did you learn about the light dependent reactions? Did you learn about the electron transport chain associated with the light dependent reactions? And did you learn about NADPH and NADP plus and where that is going and how that is influencing the Calvin cycle? This is going to be the end of the video. We'll see you all in class tomorrow.